Our first stop here in Newport is gonna be Goodwill. And this one's kind of exciting because it's a Goodwill boutique. So it's not the big superstore, it's the boutique, but that means that the pricing might be a little bit higher, but it also means that there's gonna be way better stuff. It actually looks like a fairly decent sized Goodwill boutique here. And just across the street is a Habitat for Humanity Restore that we're gonna head to next. So let's get inside there and see if we can find some really cool things. I am so glad that I just saw this with the flute because I've come across one of these woven textiles before in this triangular shape and I never knew what it was for. And I thought it was kind of a unique shape. Well, now I know what it's for. Jesse is finally gonna have a proper office to decorate and he's really into the beetles. So I've been looking for some more pieces for him. This one is $12.99 and it's kind of cool because it looks like a candid shot instead of something that's more staged. I don't know who those two dudes are in it though. I think I'm gonna pass on this one. Something that I've noticed about pottery and sets of things at the Goodwill Boutique is that it actually isn't more expensive than if you were to buy these pieces individually at a regular Goodwill. Let's see how much this one is. So it's $14.99 for the entire set, but it's got four saucers and four cups. And when you add that up at a regular Goodwill, usually these are priced at either $2.99 or $3.99 each. It's actually less expensive at the Goodwill Boutique to get the entire set. This is a beautiful vintage stoneware set right here. And I love these little tumbler size cups because they're so great for a variety of different things. It's $12.99 for all six of them. So again, it's the same situation. If these were $2.99 individually, it would add up to more. This little hand-painted frog is $12.99. This Japanese piece is interesting because you turn this metal wheel right here and it is a music box. I've never seen one of these like that before. I think she's really, really beautiful. One of my goals on this beach trip is to pick up some summer vintage handbags. I've had a lot of requests for them, but I seem to keep finding wool ones that are better for the winter. This one's not vintage though. One thing I really love about the boutiques is that they pull out really unique items. So there might not be a ton of things on the shelf, but pretty much everything that they put out is either valuable because it's designer or it's just a little bit quirky and unique. I walked right past this beauty when I walked in the front door and I'm so glad that I did a second loop and I noticed it. I'm gonna be grabbing this one. It's $19.99, but the colors and the shape on this one are too good to pass up. I wear a lot of vintage clothing, but I like to mix it with modern pieces. And my very favorite modern designer is Johnny Was. The colors on this dress are incredible. It's a size small, so it wouldn't fit me, but I've got to pull this out so that I can show you guys how pretty it is. And I'm actually glad it's too small for me, so I'm not tempted to buy it. They do retail for around three to $400 regular price. So 150 in perfect condition is still a good deal.
This one here is an anthropology dress and it's got $168 as the retail price. Clearly it's brand new because it's got the tags on it. And then they are asking $49.99. So about a quarter of retail, which is not bad because it does have the tags on it. I love the colors in this one and it is my size. It is $29.99 and it is a free people dress. And I think that this would be really fun to wear in the fall with tights, but I also feel like you could wear that in the summertime just how it is. You know, I'm always drawn to my old man hats and my chunky leather boots, but this is the first time I've ever been drawn to men's leather belts. I don't know what it is about this purse, but for some reason, I really, really like it. One thing about going into the Goodwill boutiques is you kind of have to be ready to drop a little bit of money because you're going to find really amazing designer things and they're going to be at a fraction of the price of full retail, but it's still going to add up to be a lot. I did end up splurging on this purse. I thought it was so cool that they use recycled belts. How fun is this? I thought it was a little bit edgy and different than anything that I own. And it is by a company made here in Oregon. I believe their factory might be out of Eugene. I know they have a Portland location too. And it's called Will. And I actually had a friend that worked there for a while doing sales. And I remember her saying that these bags retailed for two to three hundred dollars each. So their stuff is super high quality, really, really good craftsmanship. And I'm gonna have this funky little belt bag forever. And if you are out there and you're wanting to do something like this on a dime, I bet you could go to garage sales, maybe church run sales pick up a bunch of vintage belts maybe you could even grab some from your dad's closet if he doesn't use them anymore and try to make something amazing like this this hand painted piece is stunning look at all the different patterns and colors on it this is what I'm always talking about when I'm mentioning mixing patterns look at how many different patterns are on this one piece of pottery and all the colors and it looks amazing pieces like this make it so easy to add a huge pop of color and then you can pull out and accent any of the colors in this piece that you want piece and this one was only $20. Speaking of mixing patterns and fun colors, I picked this one up for only $30 and I thought this would be so fun for a summer beach trip. Well, I'm on a summer beach trip. It's such a beautiful, lightweight, flowy dress. These are so fun to wear in the summer. And then a free people dress for only $29.99, which is a really good deal because free people dresses can retail for anywhere from maybe $88 to $150. And this one's in perfect condition. And I think the colors on it are really fun together. And the best part is it has pockets in the front. When I talked to the lady at the register, I asked her if she had any favorite vintage shops. And literally you can see the vintage shop from out the window. So we're gonna hit Habitat for Humanity across the street real quick. And then we're gonna head to the vintage shop. This is how close the habitat is. So that is the Goodwill we were just at. And then right here, loop, that's where we're going next, the ReStore. Look what I also see across the street. It looks like it's open. It's called Wesley's Trading Post and it says buy, sell, and trade. And I'm gonna check that out after ReStore to see if they might have any jewelry. There's something I'm really on the hunt for and it is a brutalist doorknob. So that is the, my main goal today to try to find somewhere here on the Oregon coast. It is so hard to find vintage lamps that are in good condition in pairs, and there are two of these.
They've got $15 each, so it would be $30 for the pair. They have the original lampshades and they look to be in great condition. Nesting tables are so great when you have a small space, but every once in a while you need to have a little bit more table surface. I'm really not sure if these are vintage or if they are a reproduction. They're really great design and $45 for all three of them is a good price. What I like about these is that they are good crossover pieces. They work with mid-century style, but they also work with boho. I'd pick them up for myself, but I already have a great trio of nesting tables. The thing that's hard about mid-century furniture now is that there are so many reproductions out there. I'm pretty confident that this one here is a reproduction, but it's still a great single chair if you're looking for something just for a desk. Some of the best furniture pieces in my home have come from Habitat for Humanity. I got my Hutch at Habitat for Humanity. I got my Haywood Wakefield dining table at Habitat. I'm on the hunt for a bed in our new guest room, but I'm not quite sure what I want. I feel like I'm gonna know it when I see it. And I'm definitely not picking up a bed on this trip. Whenever I can't see what's there in the back, I always just use the zoom in feature on my phone. Nope, not what I'm looking for. I wish so badly that we would have had some kind of architectural drawings of our new home. I've always thought that would be so fun if you had some of the original blueprints or drawings of your home and you could display them somewhere throughout the house. I always find that Habitat for Humanity has a pretty good selection of art. I've even picked up some original oil paintings from here for just a few bucks. One of the main reasons I wanted to stop here today is because I'm looking for vintage hardware for our new home. We have a lot of door handles we wanna switch out and it's really hard to find exactly what you're looking for in large quantities, but every once in a while you get lucky and someone took off all the knobs and donated them all together. I have some tiles that I found at a previous Habitat for Humanity for only $2 for the entire box. And I'm gonna pop in a little clip here so I can show you guys these beautiful hand-painted tiles. I've been saving them for so long and I finally have the perfect place to put them as accent tiles in Little Italy. It was interesting. I actually thought when I walked in the door that there was gonna be a lot of jewelry counters, but this place actually has a handful of antique home decor items. This food dog looks like it used to be part of a lamp. And the pricing here is not bad. This cute little mirror is only $8. I ended up putting back both of the lamps. They were only $15 for the pair, which just for the lampshades alone was a great deal. But I'm just getting started on the Oregon Coast Tour and I have to fit everything in this car. 
and I'm still holding that hope that I'm going to find a sweet piece of mid-century furniture and I just didn't want to worry about damaging the lamps or the lampshades and since I wasn't going to get them for myself I was going to get them for a resale I put them back and hopefully somebody else will find them because they were great lamps they were definitely that 70s uh you know loungy kind of vibe with the coloring on them and I didn't end up finding anything across the street either he did have some antiques but I didn't end up taking anything with me there was no jewelry but now we are here at the antique mall across the street and I'm kind of excited because it looks like it's really big and it's called cheap frills so it's got to have some good deals in there if the name is cheap frills right I always pick up these large leather satchel bags, especially if they look like they're gonna be big enough to fit a laptop. They said this one is a local handmade artisan piece and it's only $35. I think that's a really great deal for this bag. I am all for mixing metals and I think adding in some chrome accents when you have brass hardware and brass accessories throughout the room works wonderful. I really like this mid-century atomic style and the fact that there's a pair is pretty good. I'm not gonna grab them, but they are really cool. This is a beautiful hand-painted piece of Native American pottery. They've got $45 on it. I love the design and the fact that it has a critter on it, but it does have a really large chip on the back. Still has a lot of life left in it. You just need to turn it around to the front, but I'm gonna pass on it because of the chip. Glassware can be really hit and miss for me in my online shop. I really do like these ones though because there's the full set of six and they've got that perfect vintage amber color. And they're only asking $29 for the whole set. I adore these vintage hand-woven bags from the Philippines. They've got these adorable little embroidered flowers and this is exactly what I was looking for for my shop. I've had a lot of requests for vintage handbags lately and I think this will be perfect. This is one of my favorite pairs of salad utensils. They've got this beautiful art deco looking detail and they've got the mixed metal look that I love. I have a lot of beautiful vintage pendants that I'm looking for necklaces to attach them to. And I really like this clay handmade one. It's only $12.50 and I think it will work really well to attach a pendant. There's actually even a little gap right there. I think that's gonna be perfect. As long as it falls right when you wear it on your neckline, I think that's gonna work great. I'm gonna also get this gold beaded one for $12.95. I really like these ones that look like 1920s wrap style necklaces. Here is a little birdie mola textile. This one's only $8 and it does have the stitching going all the way through on the back side. So I think that's a really good deal for this piece. I'm gonna grab this one for sure. Someone just asked me in a video recently why I don't ever pick up Blue Willow. And the reason why you never see me pick it up is because I already have an entire set that I used at my wedding reception. I spent almost an entire year collecting the Blue Willow plates for the wedding, and it's actually one of the reasons that I first got into selling vintage.
Now that Jesse and I have an acre of property, we've been talking a lot about what kind of dog we wanna get. And this is the kind of dog that I wanna get. Not an actual wolf, but something that looks like a wolf dog. So if any of you guys have any suggestions of really good dog breeds that have a similar look to a wolf or a husky, maybe a German Shepherd, please let me know in the comments below. I would love your guys' advice. They are only asking $10 for this pair of Norwegian candle holders. That is a great deal. And you guys already know that I love pewter. This antique mall is huge. So far, it's the biggest one that I've been to yet on the Oregon coast. I've already found a few pieces on this trip for my rooftop terrace that I'm calling Little Italy. And I think this is going to be a perfect accent. I'm gonna have a lot of different shades of terracotta. And I really like this one because it's got these beautiful large flowers on the outside of the pot. Most of the Mexican pottery pieces that I already have, the design is actually hand cut into the terracotta. So this pot's really unique. At first I thought that these were bunny rabbits, but they are actually little baby deer. These would be so cute if they were bunny rabbits to decorate for Easter. There's nothing better than a really good candelabra for a statement piece. They look amazing on a fireplace mantle or on a credenza or running down the center of your dining table. This one is only $15. That is a steal. I have had a 1970s denim hat on my wish list for quite a while and I am thrilled to find this one here today. It's only $15 and I've seen these online on eBay for probably around $40 to $60. So $15 is not a bad deal. These mid-century magazine racks and record holders sell really well, but I actually have one or two right now in my storage I need to get listed. So I'm not gonna grab that one today. One of my favorite things about 1970s pottery are that they have cattails in them. I don't know if it's the Vernonia Lake growing up canoeing there or what, but I love cattails. It's also one of the reasons I love Virgil Thrasher because he has so many cattails in his designs. So I'm gonna grab this one, it's only $12.95. I need an ice bucket for the bar we're gonna put downstairs in our basement. And even though I love cork, I think I'm gonna pick this one up to resell because I have my heart set on a teak one. I'm gonna hold out, but this is too good to leave behind. And it looks like I'm not gonna walk out of here with just one hat. This looks very similar to the red and navy blue wool ones that I have, and I loved wearing those last winter. And here in Oregon, we only have about another month of sunshine and summer, and then the rainy season comes, and I just love hats. I am a hat lady. Down here, in the downtown Newport area. And I'm gonna take you guys around the city and kind of show you what there is to do here. There's a lot of fun things to do if you wanna bring your family. They have a lot of kids activities and they even have an amazing aquarium. I worked up quite an appetite at Cheap Thrills. No, it's not Cheap Thrills, it's Cheap Thrills. <laughs> it was kind of a cheap thrill, except I did spend a little bit of money. <laughs> But anyways, I'm hungry and I think I really want some clam chowder. I can't believe it, but I have not had clam chowder yet on this Oregon coast trip. And Oregon is famous for its clam chowder. So I'm not just gonna risk it and walk into any store. I'm gonna Google and I'm gonna find the best clam chowder in town. I might even just start asking around at the different shops. Let's go check out Newport. 
A great option if you're looking for a beachfront hotel on a pretty good budget would be the Best Western. The main reason that I chose to stay here was because as soon as you get outside, you follow this little pathway and it takes you directly out onto the beach. And one of my favorite things about Oregon beaches is it's actually not that rare for you to walk out and have the entire beach to yourself. Once you get into the town, there are so many options and activities for you to do. They have a Ripley's Believe It or Not, which is a great place to take the kids. And they also have the Newport Aquarium just across the bridge. You can grab your fresh seafood right off of the boat and then head down to the pier. And on really hot sunny days, you'll find a bunch of sea lions down here. A classic place to stop for seafood would be Moe's. This is always going to be a safe bet. It's got great food, it's locally owned, and they have them all up and down the Oregon coast. I don't know about other beach towns around the country and around the globe, but Oregon beach towns are known for their saltwater taffy. And every time I go to the beach, I've got to pick some up for my mom. But today I'm also looking for some fudge because I've been wanting to come to this specific candy store to try some of their incredible handmade fudge. There are so many options, so I'm going to ask the girl at the register which one I should get. When I asked around town, it was clear that Clearwater was where I needed to try the clam chowder today. They have a beautiful view of the bridge and the water from the patio. And I like two types of clam chowder. I either like it really chunky or I like it really pureed. And this was fantastic. Clearwater is a locally owned family business and you know I'm all about supporting small businesses and their service was just as good as their incredible food. And I even got to watch a cute little jellyfish float by while I had my lunch. Here's a map on the dock of the area. So my hotel that I'm staying at right now is actually up here kind of by Agate Beach, right about there. And then it's about a seven minute drive into town. And this is the area that I did most of the thrifting right here. And then you come further down and just before you get to this Highway 101 bridge, you go over here and this is where the sea lion docks are. This is where the restaurants are. This is where I had my lunch. It's a beautiful view of this bridge from all along here. There's so many different areas. I mean, you've got this whole city center area that I didn't even take you guys to. You've got the lighthouse here, Fisherman's Memorial. Um, where is the sea lion caves? That might be further up before you get here. Oh yes, because, okay, there's the other lighthouse right there. And so somewhere along here must be the sea lion caves. I'm surprised it's not on there. Maybe it's up in here. Maybe it's in that little cove. So yeah, definitely Google it. I'm not the best at this, but it's a beautiful town and lots to see. So many different areas to go hang out in and have fun with your family. I thought I was done and on my way back to the hotel, I drove right past this place. So we're gonna check this store out. This is so funny. That cattail pottery at Cheap Frills reminded me so much of Virgil Thrasher. And then here is this beautiful wheat wall hanging. And this looks almost identical to one that I've had from him. I'm noticing none of the pieces here have prices. So I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign.
These little star woven baskets look so pretty when they're put into a basket gallery wall. This one's a little bit dirty, but I think I can clean that up. Oh, be still my heart. Do you guys know what these are? Because I know what these are, or at least what I think that they are. These look to be authentic Milo Bauman scoop chairs. They need a little bit of work and there's no price marked on them, but I'm gonna go grab the lady at the front counter and find out how much she's asking. I have been doing a really good job building my mid-century utensil collection lately. I have a couple more pieces that I found off camera that I can't wait to show you guys, including some beautiful teak fondue forks. So stay tuned for that in an upcoming episode. These brass lotus candle holders look so beautiful when they're lit up. This one is a knockoff. It is not the expensive Feldman brand, but it's still really beautiful. I just gotta find out how much she's gonna ask for all this stuff. I went to the front counter and it turns out that the way that this vintage store works is you basically build your pile and then you make an offer at the end. So she's holding those chairs for me and my other smalls and I'm gonna take my time and look through all of this stuff because there's some really cool vintage in here and I'm so glad that I decided to stop at this place. My heart's kind of pounding a little bit because I'm so excited about the Milo Bobbin chairs. <laughs> These would be so beautiful if you were to frame these and hang them on a wall. You could do an entire gallery wall just out of these prints right here. These vintage planters might look a little bit boring and they're not too exciting when you see them all dirty and in just a pile of stuff, but I promise you that these can look really beautiful when they get cleaned up and I'll show you guys what I'm gonna do with this one. Well, that just happened. I can't believe I actually fit them both in the car. I had to pull everything out of the car that I've gotten over the last few days and reconfigure it, play a little bit of Tetris, but I was able to get both the chairs in. And I'm so excited because I'm pretty sure that they are Milo Bauman chairs. And even though some of the tweed is damaged, I don't know, maybe I can find a way to salvage it and rework it, stitch it up a little bit, call it Wabi Sabi and be happy with it. And if not, then maybe I can get them recovered to match our other Milo Bauman's. After I got them loaded in the car, I went back in because I had found this amazing spoon and I knew that there had to be the second one that went with it. I really, really had a good feeling it was in there somewhere because there was so much stuff. I just hadn't gone through everything because I was so scared I was gonna lose out on these chairs. 
so I wanted to get them in the car. But when I went back in, obviously I kept digging and I found the matching one. Look how fabulous these are. I really love knowing that a lot of the pieces that I find on this adventure with you guys, I'm gonna have in my house for the rest of my life. And I'm definitely gonna be making a lot of salads with these. That place wasn't even on my radar. I just happened to have drove by at the right moment and these babies and those babies were just waiting for me. Well, the car is pretty much full, but we are not calling it quits. We might only be halfway done with this Oregon Coast tour, but I'm not going to give up and I'm going to find a lot of things to still pack into this car. If I have to take those chairs out at each stop to play Tetris and reconfigure, I will because I know I can cram a lot more goodies in this car. Well, it has been a fun day here in Newport, Oregon. I hope you guys really enjoyed seeing the city and checking out all of the vintage and thrift stores with me. And now it's time for me to head to the beach because I still had that chocolate fudge in my purse and I don't want it to melt. So I'm gonna go for an evening walk on the beach, have my chocolate, and I will see you guys in the next episode, which is gonna be Florence, Oregon. Remember in the Newport episode where I was trying to find out where the sea lion caves were because I thought they were just north of Newport? Well, they are not north of Newport, they are just north of Florence. And you can see the sign right here, it says a quarter of a mile. And I am right now next to the lighthouse. So they are right next to the lighthouse just north of Florence. So now you know, and now I know. <laughs> I got two different desserts. The girl at the counter recommended the tiramisu fudge. So I got that and that's what I'm having tonight. And then I got the pistachio for tomorrow night because pistachio is my favorite. And I'm just gonna sit here on the beach and eat my snack. Looks like I have the whole beach to myself. It's a great way to end a great day. I will see you guys in Florence, Oregon tomorrow. Oh my word. I just had to come back on here and tell you that's one of the best things I've ever eaten in my entire life. Wow. Before I end this episode and before we get moved into our new home, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update on the rental home. We knew that this place was going to be a temporary place for us to stay until we bought a new home. We just didn't know how quickly we were going to buy a new home. So here it is with a lot of our home decor kind of crammed into a small space. We've really made it work. And something that I realized with this rental house is that home is where the heart is, as they say, and home is where you make it because Jesse and I have been able to be incredibly happy here in this home. And I would highly encourage you, no matter where you're living or what your circumstances are, to take a little bit of time to decorate your home to reflect yourself because it really does make a big difference in how you feel when you're in that space. We have been hand picking and collecting these secondhand pieces over the last decade and it feels really good to see them come together in this space and it gets us really excited about what it's going to feel like and look like in our new home. We got the keys to our house and Jesse and I are just so thrilled. We are so unbelievably grateful for this place. And I do want to show you the cute little planter with a spider plant in it, just so you guys can see how something can be pulled kind of out of the trash and turned beautiful in the right setting. We knew the moment that we first walked onto this property that this is where we were meant to be. And I am so grateful to all of you guys that I even get this opportunity to share this next chapter in our lives with you. So just wanted to say thank you for that because as you know, life is just better when it's shared.
And I'm all sentimental right now, but I wanna leave you guys on a fun note and show you what's coming to my next First Friday sale.